Hey what's going on guys, come on GNZ here, in this video we will implement collision detection for our Tetris game so without further ado let's actually start um, I want to have a look at the output of our game from the previous from the previous part so we can move our Tetramino but you see like it just goes uh, off board also then the same happens if you try to rotate which, which is not really great and also it overlaps the existence of Trominos which is definitely not the case so how are we going to deal with our collision detection well uh, the way uh, we're supposed to rely on uh, in order to implement this is going to be extremely similar to the code that actually allows to fit the Tetramino into uh, into this graphical representation of our board because I want to uh, I want to remind you the fact that if we print the board here then uh, you see like you see like this uh, I just probably up, uh, update it right so here I just want to print the board so you see like um, no matter if I move this tetramino down you see it's not it's not on the board yet it's just kind of hanging in the air right so it's not yet settled down like this one and the color actually shows this as well so we'll now reuse the code that we've been using for uh, this fitting the Tetromino into the Tetris board that was covered in a single video and reuse it to actually detect the collisions. Now let's go for it. So here uh, I'm looking for a function uh, draw Tetromino. Yes, this one. So yeah, I just take, I take this loop. Uh, all we need is uh, to loop over all the cells in the tetromino itself, so over tetromino size, uh, like four by four elements. So we need to loop over these guys, and then we need to, to find the index, uh, the element index by this four by four grid, the, the one that is on uh, within the tetromino itself, and then to kind of overlap that on the board index. And we use some math to do that. So here is the math. So here we have the index uh, of the corresponding element of the tetromino array that is kind of overlapped onto the board so let's create i think it can be done here so just say collision detection and let's create a function uh let's say hit tetromino hit tetromino yes uh or just hit or how to call it um, I'm wondering um, let's call it hit the tromino not the best ever way to name it but that should be just fine so fit the tromino and yeah here we go so we're good we, we go over the rows of the tetromino array and the columns four by four the tromino size is four because again like here we have four and now um yeah so we need this two indices so the tetromino index um does rely on the current shape depending on uh, on the rotation and the fit index that is used to correlate with with the board and we don't need to render this one in the year instead we want to actually to detect collision here so just duplicate collision but it's okay um, so I can say if now um, the Tetrominos the Tetrominos and type of the Tetromino is the current Tetromino so let's make sure that it's really the case yes current Tetromino the current Tetromino is uh, the type of the given piece that we're currently uh, looking for collisions for so current tetromino and it's indexed by the tetromino index all right so if this is not equal to an empty uh, empty cell and also if the board indexed by this fit index is not equal to an empty one this means that we have 
uh, an overlap in element. So the element of the tetromino, a single cell of the tetromino, overlaps either on the other settled tetromino on the board or on the board edge. So this is the uh, this is how we know that the collision happens. Uh, so let's say collision uh, happened. Okay, happened. And in this case, we want to return zero. Uh, and otherwise, so by default, uh, we want to return true. So it means like it's not, uh, we, we, we're going to be call it like if not hit tetromino is equal to true. So not hit. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's more logical actually to say uh, because of the function names better to say return zero here and here. So here, um, let's say collision didn't occur. And here, let's say collision occurred. All right, so this actually already should be fairly enough to, to actually work. And now, so again, I just want to make sure. So if we do hit, if we do, we do have the collision that if hit to tromino is equal to true. Okay, so now let's try to, so we have this, let's start with the left and right. So here I can say if uh, hit to tromino, uh, actually if not hit to tromino, in this case, I want to increase the position y. And the same thing I want to do for the rest of directions. So here and here. And now I hold my breath and I really hope that it already should not be going. Um, okay, so do we have an error? Okay, board is not defined. Uh, oh, sorry, it's uh, it's not called board here, it's called Tetris. Uh, is it? Yes, yeah, it's called Tetris. Okay, so collision detection, hit the tromino. Yes, this here I call it Tetris. So one more time. Okay, yes, and I hold my breath and... <laughs> okay, so still something goes wrong. Um, yeah, still something goes wrong. But I'm really wondering, well, it doesn't, uh, yeah, it just, okay. It doesn't go any further, which is good, but I'm wondering, yes, it's not 100% proper yet. All right, guys, I'm sorry, yeah, just I missed one important thing. So actually here, uh, we actually need to say fit X and fit Y, because uh, uh, so far, I've been looking for the current cor uh, current coordinates, uh, position x and position y. But we need to look for the next uh, for the next one uh, for the next square if it uh, either if collision detection happens there or not. So here, instead of position x and position y, I just say fit y, and here we say the fit x. Yeah, because otherwise it, it does exactly what it should, <laughs> what I told it to do. So it was um, uh, detecting the collision in the current position, not in the next one. And here, de dependent, yeah, so we actually do need some, uh, we do need some parameters. So here I say, so position X is the same when we go in down, but here I say position one plus one, position, position Y plus one. So here, um, position X minus one and then position Y. So position Y goes first. Yeah, fit X, then fit Y. Okay. And here, uh, position X plus one and position Y. And now let's try this again. Okay. Okay, perfect. So we can go uh, left or right. Uh, further than the board, which is good. And now what about down? So yeah, we can hit another tetromino, which is fantastic, right? Can go here, and we can go here. Okay, so seems like the collision detection for, move, for moving tetrominoes works like a charm. However, uh, when we try to rotate, you see, 
uh, still uh, there is an issue so just overlaps here okay and it's not the only problem so another problem is might be like so we just go here for instance so I can no longer go down left or right however if I start rotating <laughs> it still can rotate so uh, we now need to deal with this as well so the very first thing uh, we want to remember the current shape and let's call it old shape is equal to current shape so this is the index that represents uh, the current rotation angle so one of four possible available there and um, so we first we remember this then we do update the current shape and then uh, after we have updated the current shape uh, we need to say if uh, if actually if it hits the tetromino so here I was saying not hit the tetromino because we didn't yet put it there but now we already put it there like we did rotate and in this case if it does hit the tetromino so if hits if hit the tetromino and the coordinates are position x and position y so the only rotation has changed the position didn't change so assuming the current position in this case I want to restore the current shape so current shape is going to be equal to old shape that's it so from now on if I did everything properly it now should be not able to rotate into the board edge so let's have a look so come into the board edge and I can rotate I'm pressing up I can rotate here I can okay what about here can rotate again but here I can here I can't you see like just doesn't go any further good and now let's say here can't rotate doesn't rotate doesn't rotate here as well and yeah doesn't rotate here as well so we can assume that from now on the collision detection kind of works nicely so for instance here it's it fits here it's okay but here for instance just turns once and then it can because it would otherwise result in overlapping the squares so once we've settled down that's that's kind of it so we can no longer uh, we can no longer rotate anything so that's it okay but now still we have this problem uh, we actually have this piece landed into its place where it would stay until either the game is over or this would get rid of the lines if we have all all the blocks in the line but we don't yet have the logic to to say this if I just bring the board again you see like we don't have this tetromino so we have it here we have it here right but we don't have it here so in the next video um, we'll implement the function to actually land the tetromino uh, into the place where where it should be so yeah that would be covered in the next one this is it from my side guys thanks for watching until the next time and take care